feudalism, and manor life. Why did vassals serve lords? What was a knight? What was chivalry? In what ways did knights and lords each benefit from feudalism? What was a typical manor like? How did most serfs live under the manor system? Feudalism was where people above promised land to people below, and people below promised to fight for those above. Vassals were people that swore an oath and returned for land. Everyone under the king was a vassal. A fief was a piece of land given for a promise of military service. Knights were warriors that fought on horseback. Serfs were the poor farmers on the bottom. A manor was a self-reliant medieval community. William the Conqueror invaded England in 1066. Eleanor of Aquitaine ruled southwest France as a vassal of the king. In the Middle Ages, the type of government was called the feudal system. Under this system, the king owned everything. The king owned the land, the lumber on the land, the firewood, the deer and the other game animals, the fish in the brooks, the towns, the buildings, the people, their tools, their clothes, everything. Obviously, the king couldn't manage it all by himself. The king would let other people use land in exchange for military support. I'm the king. I own everything. If you promise to support me with military, I'll give you some land. So the barons would say, I promise. The barons then would turn around and say, I'm a lord. And if you promise to fight for me, I'll give you some land. And to those underneath them, eventually knights, they would promise to support. At the bottom of the scale was, were the serfs. They worked the land. In return, they got protection when enemy soldiers came. The one giving the land was referred to as the lord, and the one receiving the land was called the vassal. Those in the middle would be both a lord and a vassal. Feudalism was the power structure and the theory behind it. The manor system was the self-sufficient community where the lords and the serfs lived together. They had only a limited amount of trade outside the manor. Most manors would have a mill, a fireplace, a workshop, and all the things you see right here. The lord of the manor had legal and economic power over his tenants. The serf typically could cut a certain amount of hay from the common field and could hook and crook firewood and take a limited amount of lumber. His holding included a house and a strip of land for a garden. A serf's family may have lived in a home such as these. Animals typically lived in the same house as the humans. So did the rats. A serf's life was filled with hard labor. They were plagued with vermin, lice, fleas, and worms. The stirrup was invented around 1000 AD. The stirrup allowed the rider to stand up, allowing impact warfare. Before the invention of the stirrup, the main weapon was the spear. It was raised over the head and thrown, or jabbed from a chest-high position. It was a stabbing weapon. After the stirrup, the spear was replaced with the lance. The lance was tucked under the arm. It was an impact weapon used to knock down. You'll enjoy these. Plate armor was not the norm. Mail with a helmet was much more common. Early knights were much like the Vikings, earning wealth and glory by looting neighboring cities, often killing masses of people and burning their towns. Innocents were killed, and a nation 
could be destroyed for booty as cities raided each other. Chivalry was the church's attempt to civilize a barbaric warrior class. The church began by publishing rules to reform knights. These were the forerunners of modern rules of warfare, like the Geneva Convention. In 989 AD, the church published The Peace and Truth of God, which forbade knights from injuring non-combatants. In 1027 AD, it published The Truce of God, which prohibited fighting on the Sabbath, holy days, or in the winter, when life was hard anyway. These rules were written in Latin, later writing in the knights' own languages. Poets like Chrétien de Troyes published tales in which the knights followed a code of chivalry. The most famous of these were the tales of King Arthur and his knights. In 1276, Raymond Lull published that it was a knight's duty to his faith, his lord, and then to women, children, widows, and orphans. In the early Middle Ages, any peasant rich enough to buy a horse and a sword could ride off to war and be a knight. Also in the early Middle Ages, knights could become nobles. In the Middle Ages, knighthood was one of the two ways out of serfdom and poverty. The other way was to join the church. Buying and maintaining a horse was very expensive. As time went on, a knight was also expected to feed, clothe, and equip and train a squire. Later, there were more rules about knighthood. Lords placed less emphasis on fighting ability and more on bloodlines, family crests, etc. The division between knight and lord became wider. In 1066, William the Conqueror invaded England from France. He introduced the idea of feudalism to England. In feudalism, as we have said, all land belonged to the king and the king allowed those loyal to him to use some of the land. These loyal people were called vassals. William the Conqueror built the Tower of London and other castles around England and gave them to his vassals. The French became a ruling class in England and the English became conquered serfs. This explains why so many pairs of words in modern English have nearly the same meaning. cow and beef or cattle, calf and veal, swine, pork, sheep or lamb and mouton, deer, venison, hen or chicken, poultry, freedom, liberty, kingly, royal, dove, pigeon, cook, chef, ghost, phantom, blossom, flower, buy, purchase, weep, cry, lawyer, attorney, fall, autumn, forgive, pardon, wild, savage. Ellen of Aquitaine was one of the wealthiest and most powerful people in Western Europe during the High Middle Ages. When she was still a child, she became Duchess of Aquitaine, and later she married King Louis VII of France and became queen. Then she married Henry, son of William the Conqueror of England. When William died, her husband became King Henry II of England. She supported her son in a revolt against her husband, and her husband had her imprisoned. She was not released until their son became Richard I 16 years later. When Richard I ran off on a crusade, his brother John became king. Thus, Eleanor had been queen of two countries and had two sons become king. These are the two kings popularized in the stories of Robin Hood. Eleanor of Aquitaine was also the 19 times great-grandmother of George Washington. 